Hey, it's Alicia, and in this video, I am going to share with you the three reasons that your lower abdominals, some of your deep core muscles, might not be firing, might not be activating, what this means, and what kinds of aches or pains or postural dysfunctions you might notice in your body if you happen to be in this situation. Uh, this is kind of a follow-up from my video last week, which is talking about the three reasons that glutes stop firing, because um, glutes are part of your core, and more on that in just a second. But if you want to check out the video from last week, uh, it might be a good complement to this video. We'll link to it. You can click right here to check that out. So your core actually consists of, in my definition, uh, your glutes, your abdominals, your low back muscles, and kind of everything in between your diaphragm and the obliques. Uh, so it, I just like to clarify because I look at it as your entire core. Um, but a lot of the time you might be taking a yoga class or you might be working out with a trainer or you might look something up on YouTube and you've got a core workout. And what they really mean are abs. It's an ab workout, abdominal workout. For the purposes of this video, we're actually talking about the lower abdominals specifically. So kind of below your belly button those typically tend to be the muscles in your abdominal core region that become inhibited as part of a phenomenon I call pelvic instability. So I define pelvic instability to mean one or both hips out of alignment combined with one or more of your deep core muscles not firing, leading to compensations and pain. So the core muscles I'm talking about here that could become inhibited, the abdominal core muscles, are going to be uh, your iliopsoas, those powerful hip flexor muscles, uh, the pelvic floor, and your transverse abdominis primarily. Maybe external obliques we could throw in there, um, but the reason we're uh, targeting these muscles in the case of pelvic instability or when they're not firing um, is because they're your deep core muscles, meaning they're really deep inside the body and they're critical for spinal stability and pelvic stability. So what might you be experiencing if your lower abdominals are inhibited. I wanna cover that first, and then I'm gonna go into the three reasons and then what you can actually do about it. Uh, so things you might be experiencing if your lower abdominals are not firing or not activating for you. Posturally, you might notice that you're in some kind of anterior pelvic tilt. You might have a sway back or lordosis posture. You might be experiencing things like low back pain, hip pain, knee pain. It's honestly a huge list because this falls into the category of pelvic instability a lot of the time, and it can be head to toe pain, even things like plantar fasciitis. So it's a big pain list, but the primary ones that you're gonna be experiencing in uh, this case of lower abs not firing are going to be upper body issues, uh, primarily due to the fact that your neck muscles take over in a really uh, uh, aggressive, powerful way to stabilize your spine at the top when there's no stability at the bottom anytime your spine needs to be stable, which is kind of all the time. Standing, your spine needs to be stable. Anytime you're working out, your spine needs to be stable. Walking, your spine needs to be stable. Um, but specifically, if you notice your neck taking over during any kind of core or abdominal workout, then chances are your lower abdominals are inhibited, your neck muscles take over, and in this case, they get really, really tight here in the SEMs and the scalenes, and when this happens, it can cause a cascade of pain issues in the upper body. So things like neck pain, TMJ or jaw pain, tension headaches, numbness and tingling in the arms and hands, um, pins and needles, your arms going to sleep uh, when you're sleeping um, or lying on your side, uh, shoulder issues, mid-back pain, um, all kinds of things in the upper body can happen when the neck muscle takes over for a lack of lower abdominal activation. And finally, some non-injury type uh, aches and pains you could be experiencing are things like incontinence or pelvic floor pain, digestive issues and gut pain or organ dysfunction because you actually need core muscles activating and working for you uh, to keep your organs in their proper place. All right, so let me know in the comment section if you relate to any of the things I just shared, if you're beginning to suspect that you have lower abdominal muscles, core muscles not firing. And now I'm going to talk about the three reasons they stop firing. These are the primary reasons I've experienced either in my own body 
or when working with private clients in my private practice. Um, but before I dive into that, I do wanna let you know that uh, my course, Solving Pelvic Instability, is still open for enrollment. We actually just started today um, together as a group. It's a five-week program, so it's a five-week process of learning how to map your own fascia, find the root cause of pain like we're talking about here today. It involves you know, looking at muscles that might not be activating, like those lower abdominals or your glutes. Um, you can learn some tests to figure out if that's the case for you. you. You can learn how to activate those muscles again and be part of a group doing it together. We also look at the mind-body connection and the nervous system. There's a lot inside this course. Uh, it's already started, but it's not too late to join. We're gonna close doors tomorrow uh, because we have our first live call this week together on Zoom. The live calls are not the class itself. The class or the course is all pre-recorded video that you can follow along and watch on your own time. But I do offer five weeks of live Zoom calls for Q&A and group support. And it's one of my favorite parts of doing these kinds of courses online. So if you've been thinking of joining this, I highly recommend that you do so now. Um, I will be making this course available at some point in the future again, um, but chances are I'm not gonna be offering live support anymore. I have other projects that I wanna move on to, um, other courses I wanna create, uh, and so I may make it available as a self-study, but if you like the idea of getting on Zoom with me to ask your questions, then now is the time to join. So you can find all the links in the description box below. Uh, and if you're watching this video later, then doors are probably closed because we had to shut everything down and move through this with a group over the next five weeks. Okay, reason number one that your lower abdominals will stop firing, stop activating, uh, is if you've ever fallen on your tailbone or maybe had low back surgery or in a rare case, it does happen, if you are somebody who has a really tight lower back, your QL muscles, um, basically if there is density, scar tissue, or shortened tight tissues um, in that sacrum, tailbone, or low back region, then those tissues will be too dense and short to allow the lower abdominals to contract. This is due to a law an anatomical law called reciprocal inhibition, which means in order for the lower abdominals to contract, the low back muscles have to stretch. Reason number two that your lower abdominals may not be firing would be dense uh, tissue, scar tissue, tightness, brittle tissue, um, fascial adhesions in that region, in the region of these muscles, the pelvic floor, the iliopsoas, and the transverse abdominis, um, so deep in the belly. This could be due to any kind of abdominal surgery um, and things like childbirth or just having fascial adhesions in there for some reason. Um, but if the, the tissues there are just really dense and tight, they're not gonna be able to be as fluid as they need to be to expand and contract. So in order for a muscle to actually contract, it needs to first be in kind of a fluid, relaxed state and then contract. It needs to have enough blood flow to oxygenate it, to actually contract and then expand and then contract and expand. Um, so if the tissues are injured, if there's scar tissue there, if they're just too dense, they may not actually be able to contract. Finally, reason number three that your lower abdominal muscles might not be firing is loss of proprioception. Proprioception is your brain's ability to detect your body in physical space and then conduct movement in whatever space you're in. Proprioception governs balance and our movement potential. Uh, it's really critical human function, right? So you wanna own proprioception. Um, if you ever have felt like you just lost contact with a part of your body, if you suddenly feel like, oh my God, I don't even know if I can feel my foot on the ground, that would be a loss of proprioception. Um, so you need proprioception to actually command a muscle consciously to contract or unconsciously. Um, and if there's loss of proprioception, then you may not be able to contract that muscle. Now, why would that happen in this part of your body? Well, I've personally experienced this and I've worked with other people who have as well. Uh, things like sexual trauma or any kind of trauma to that part of your body might result in you wanting to cut off contact, cut off feeling that part of your body because perhaps there are some really uncomfortable, painful, feelings waiting for you to process them if you were to actually reestablish connection. Uh, it could be a, a matter of not listening to your gut. So either you know through dissociation, self-betrayal, um, uh, any number of trauma responses, we can cut ourselves off from our gut wisdom 
And because this region is our gut, yes, we have core and ab muscles here, but it's also our gut. Um, if we cut ourselves off from that region, we're cutting ourselves off from everything in that region from a proprioceptive perspective. So this is why gut issues are so common in people who have experienced trauma. And then from there, beyond just gut issues, we do end up with things like pelvic instability or lower abdominal muscles not firing, and then compensations and pain. All right, so what can you actually do about this to reverse the pattern and get those lower abdominals firing for you so you can create pelvic stability, stop compensating, and get out of pain? Right? This is part of a comprehensive solution. So um, what I'm talking about right now is a pretty complex problem and it may require doing more than what I'm just talking about in this video, which is one of the reasons I created my course solving pelvic instability. It is a comprehensive uh, solution. But what you can start with for scenario number one is if you suspect that from falling on your tailbone, maybe undergoing surgery or having really tight low back tissue, it's inhibiting your lower abdominals, then you can release the tissue in that area. You wanna do so pretty gently because if that tissue is tight or full of scar tissue from some kind of trauma, like falling on your tailbone, you wanna make sure not to re-traumatize the tissue. So the point isn't to go in there and aggressively just dig in and release it. Uh, you want to do so gently, softly. You want to kind of melt the tissue, soften it up, make it more supple, and then mobilize it. Bring some blood back into the area, start using those tissues again. Um, and then you would want to try to activate those lower abdominals. So find some lower abdominal exercises to do um, to see if you can get them activating. For reason number two, for abs not firing, that would be fascial adhesions, density, scar tissue in the abdomen itself. You're gonna to wanna to do the same thing basically, but in the abdomen. And you wanna make sure um, not to re-traumatize these tissues as well if it was due to something like a surgery um, or any kind of trauma to the area. Uh, you can go in there with your hands, you can go in there with a softball, you can go find someone who does Mayan abdominal massage. Um, you could find somebody who does pelvic floor work if you wanna go internal. So there are actually quite a few choices that you have available to you either on your own or working with somebody, um, working with some kind of professional. Uh, but you would wanna go in there and soften up that scar tissue, soften the densities, release any fascial adhesions in the gut, um, in the deep abdomen, uh, you know, anywhere in there that you find them. Um, so I have a couple videos on this. We'll link to them in the description box below. Um, and then again, you would wanna test, now that I've released this area, are those muscles actually able to contract for me? So you'd wanna find some lower abdominal exercises and see if they are working for you. And finally, for number three, obviously in the case of unhealed traumas, um, there are so many resources out there for healing trauma. I'm not gonna list them all here. Um, and because I'm talking specifically about the body, loss of proprioception and those muscles not firing due to loss of proprioception, I'm going to mostly address that. Um, but you can just start touching your body in that region, touch your belly, um, you know, maybe do some of those, uh, abdominal fascia release, uh, exercises that I have or techniques, um, but do it with the intention of actually, you know, creating a uh, connection, reestablishing connection between your brain and that part of your body. Um, you could do things like just lie on the, the floor and try to contract your abs with your knees up and just maybe even close your eyes, put your hands there and see if you can contract those muscles and create some proprioception. And then on a more psycho-emotional level, but this falls into uh, proprioception in my opinion, you can start practicing listening to your gut. Try to tune into your gut more often or at least begin to notice when you're not listening to your gut and how your gut really tries to talk to you. Uh, something that I've experienced physical benefits for are things like not just listening to my gut, um, but actually learning healthy boundaries, learning to speak my truth to people, learning to say no when I mean no, instead of saying yes and then resenting people, um, learning to say yes when I mean yes, uh, and following my own instincts, my own inner wisdom that does tend to talk to me largely through my gut um, about how to navigate my life well. All right, there you have it. Those are the three reasons, the primary reasons your lower abdominals, part of your core, 
uh, group of muscles may stop activating or stop firing for you, leading to pelvic instability, potentially then compensations and then head to toe pain, especially in the upper body, especially if you have neck muscles that are taking over for those lower abdominals. So let me know in the comments section if you relate to this video, if you found a takeaway here to help yourself heal and feel more free in your body. Um, and if you want to join us for solving pelvic instability, again, those links are in the description box below. I'm really excited to get to work with those of you who've signed up this time to get to know you on Zoom and actually support you and help you live. It's one of my favorite parts. So I can't wait to welcome those of you that decide to join this time around. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.